<clears throat> okay, what I'm going to do is explain in this is just some very basics of an um, AC three phase motor. Um, a lot of people kind of overcomplicate three phase motors. Um, what the basics are, we have three phases. So we have line one, line two, and line three. And what happens is these all have an AC sine wave coming out of them. And what happens is these are um, 120 degrees apart. All right. And what happens is <clears throat> we get a rotating magnetic field. So to put it in a simple form, we have a three phase motor and on that three phase motor, we have, we call this the stator. Now the stator means stationary, really in simple terms. And then what happens is you have these windings and they are around the stator. And what happens is you'll get them on each phase. So you'll get red, white, blue, red, white, blue, red, white, blue. And what happens is these all charge at different times and they're like what you call ghost magnets. So what happens is in the center, we have a rotor, which has these little bars sitting around them. And the rotor basically is a round cylinder with the shaft and it has these rods that run around to the outside and it looks like a squirrel cage and what happens is these rods have a magnetic field induced into them so we call this the secondary this past the primary all right and the primary is where our three phases come from red, white, blue, at 120 degrees. And what happens is, as we induce a current or a voltage onto these, we create a rotating magnetic field. Because what happens is this starts rotating around. And as you can see this red, white, and blue here, they're alternating at different times. And what happens is, we start to get a push and pull effect, and this will start to rotate around. Even if I put a Coke can or anything in there that can be induced, this will start to rotate around. And that's why we don't need to have anything to help start the three phase motor because it has this rotating magnetic field, 120 degrees apart. And we have three of them. And what they do, they create a rotating magnetic field. All right. So this shaft that you saw here, we have the primary and the secondary. This is called the stator for being stationary. All right. This is the secondary, which is what we call the rotor for rotating. Now, when you have a look at this, if I try to slow this down, this will create a slip. And what happens to this slip is it'll cause more current to be drawn on the field. So we have a couple of different things in here. We have these things called as poles, all right? So you have a, a four pole, a two pole, or a six pole motor, all right? And that's, if it's a four pole motor, it's four per phase, which means there's four on the red, four on the white, and four on the blue. So here I have one, two, three. So that means it's a three pole motor. And if I have four, so normally it's in even numbers, it's two, four, six, eight, um, whatever per phase. And as I, number, as I increase the poles, we also increase the torque. So like a car where you have a four cylinder, six cylinder, eight cylinder, the load gets shared across each cylinder. So if I increase it to a, 12, a V12 and 12 cylinders, the load is spread across 12 cylinders. If I have a four cylinder, the load is greater on the four cylinders compared to 12. All right, so we have poles. We have another thing that comes in with the supply so it might come in at say 400 volts, but at the other time, there'll be a thing called frequency, which is called Hertz, all right? 
And what happens with frequency, if we change frequency, we actually change the speed of the motor. So the poles and the frequency work together to give us our thing called RPM, which is revs per minute, and that's what actually gives us, so for example, if I wanted to work out um, you know, a four pole motor, they are normally doing around 1500 RPM, all right? So we do that through a formula. Um, I'm not gonna to go too much into that. And what happens is the 1500 RPM is measured what's on the end of the shaft. So this is what we call synchronous speed, which runs around the stator. And then we have shaft speed, all right? So shaft speed is different to synchronous speed. Synchronous speed doesn't slow down. What happens is as we increase the speed or the torque on the shaft, the motor will slowly go down, and then as it overcomes that slip, it'll gradually then come back up to speed. The only problem you got is if you put too much load on the shaft, it could bog it down too much and actually make the motor stall. And that's when we get a thing called stall current. All right, so as I said, now to change the speed or change what we call different things, we have a thing called a DL, DLL starter. So with them, all we do is we put a contactor. So we'll have a motor here, three phases into a contactor. And that's our contactor. We don't do anything with that. That's called a DOL starter contactor. Basically turns the motor on straight online. The next one we get, so we have a DOL. Um, the next one is we have a primary resistance starter. Now what happens with them? Now all these all these starters we're getting are reducing the voltage to it get before it gets to the motor. Once if we do that, right, or change the voltage or do something like that, we change the speed of the motor. So a primary resistance starter basically has a set of resistors which are in parallel with the starting. And then what happens is they get bridged out with a contactor. And, and now, and the thing we have across here is voltage drop. So this is what we call primary because it drops the voltage to the primary on the stator part, which is the stator of the motor. So we have a thing called a primary resistance starter. What happens is after about 20 seconds, these will change out, bridge the resistors out, and then create full voltage onto the motor, and that's it. So we end up with a voltage drop before it gets to the motor. So that's called a primary resistance starter. Another type we get is called an auto transformer. Now, auto transformer is good, but same thing. We need to have all these parts. So, what happens is we have a motor over here, comes across, we have the transformer windings coming through, and we have different tappings that come across, and we'll have 65, um, 80%, and say 100%. All right, so what happens here, we pick up different tappings. Um, we can't go any less than 65% because if we go down below that, it's basically dropped the voltage too far that it'll cause a motor to stall. It needs to be dropped enough. Now, the only problem with all these three different things I've talked about, so we've got auto transformer. So what happens with that? They'll get bridged out. It'll go from 65, 80, and then 100, and then back online. And that's another thing that's created a voltage drop. All right, so we have auto transformer the next one which only makes a comp now the first ones i talked about only had three wires running to them this one has six wires because they run a thing called in um what they call a star delta changeover so a star delta right slash delta and the word delta means triangle all right, so we have to have six wires run to this. We actually change the wiring inside the motor. So we make the motor run from star to delta, change the wiring inside it, um, into the box here, sorry. And it creates a voltage where it's going in from 240 volt up to, sorry, 230 volt up to 400 volts. The only problem is as it starts up, it'll get this spike and jump up because you're jumping, as you jump from one voltage to another, you could drop um, some in. The only problem with all these starters is we do lose torque, all right? Now torque, all right, is directly related to um, frequency. 
and speed. All right, so the other thing is if you drop the um, change of frequency and all that stuff and drop the voltage down, all right, so, re so basically P equals V times I, if you drop the voltage, you drop the current. If you take the current up, so there's the current there. So basically if I drop the voltage, the current will drop, I lose torque, right? And this is what my torque is equal to. All right, so once you lose torque, um, yeah, you basically got to think. So things like where I'd use this on is like a fan or a um, pump where the torque is developed as it gets going, all right? Um, and once that does get going, it uh, basically develops torque up. If I was to start with a gearbox or something, um, a DOL or something like that needs to have it where it has to develop the torque through a gearbox. All right, I'm gonna leave that for the moment. That's just the basics of some of the things you see with a three-phase motor. Um, we'll kind of go into the more the operating principle of a motor a bit later on.